Today's the 2021 Mock Draft, third edition. All right, so just a couple quick things before we get started here. Number one, Green Bay Packers fans or just anybody that wants to stay up to date with the Green Bay Packers, please check out the Packernet podcast. You can see the information, the logo. I don't know what other information you need. It's called the Packernet podcast. You can find it by searching that name. Um, Second of all, please, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscription button. Hit the little bell notification so you don't miss miss another episode. I've got a goal of 2,000 subscribers. Um, hoping to get to there. I'm not going to set a timeline because then I'm just going to look stupid when I don't hit it. Um, number three. Um, I've said several times on this channel, I don't know your team as well as you know your team, unless your team is the Green Bay Packers. Um, I'm not pretending that I do. So if I miss something, which I will, you know, uh, yeah, he's a free agent, but we've already said we're going to sign him, you know, whatever. Hit the comment section, let me know, but make sure you type in the team name. Type in Texans and then your thing or whatever. Because what I do is, when I go back and do the next one, I'm going to type in Texans to see what notes you guys left me about the Texans, what I got wrong last time, etc., etc. So I'm not opposed to any negative feedback. Please leave it. Just, you know, put it in a way so that I can actually learn rather than, you know, just type in, you're an idiot, I hope you fall off a cliff not a far one but you know you break your leg or something you know it's just it's unnecessary um finally the get up uh this is ridiculous clothing day number four i believe i've got the milwaukee mile hat on you can see it there i've got a bunch of these um uh, no real good reason i thought i could sell them and i can't so i own them as i said and I was looking around. I had no idea I owned I owned this. I believe what the situation was is it's one of those things where your father-in-law says, "Here's a bunch of clothes I don't. What do you want?" And your wife's r- ruffling through them, and you're like, "Nah, I don't really." Nah, 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 nah. And then she busts out this little number, <laughs> and it was it was love at first sight. I uh, I said yes, please, and it's just been sitting there because there's no good occasion to wear this except obviously. Uh, this YouTube channel that I'm trying to make very professional and whatnot um, seemed like the right time, you know. Just we're doing it, so deal with it. Let's get started. So I should probably also add that um, this camera is ridiculous. I thought it would be a good idea to get an autofocus camera, and it's not a good idea at all because every time you move, it's like it freaks out. So that'll have to get replaced. Fortunately, thanks to all of you, we are up to $1.58 in ad revenue. So round of applause for all of us. Um, Be getting a new camera any day now. Um, But I wanted to apologize for that. Um, Anyways, with the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. You know... One of the negative things about being at the top, despite getting a great player, is that the mocks are really boring. Um, Usually you kind of figure out who it's going to be really early on. And now it's even more boring because there's not even going to be a season. I don't don't know what's going to happen between now and the draft that's going to change anybody's mind. I just don't. Um, Obviously Justin Fields is an option. And, um, I mean, we can just throw out really any other position because Minshew isn't going to be the guy. You're picking number one overall. Now, I do want to switch this up and move the uh, order around. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is reverse order of Vegas odds to win the Super Bowl. That's how I came up with this order. Unfortunately, every order I find has the Jaguars number one, which I don't really agree with. I would probably put Washington at the top, but it doesn't matter. I don't know. Um... I just, I wish I had something more to add. I just don't have anything to add. He's a great quarterback. You need a quarterback. (sighs) Congratulations. You got your quarterback. With the second pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington NFL team franchise that plays football selects Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. That's what it is. Sheesh. Again, 
I don't I don't have a lot here. You know, uh, Penny Sewell is a decent option, but the only way in which I see sticking with Haskins is if he gets injured, and that's the reason that you're picking number two overall. If Haskins is at the helm for any significant period of time and you're picking here, it's pretty clear that this isn't it. Plus, I just think Justin Fields is a better quarterback. I don't know if it would even be a debate if they came out around the same time, you know, in the, in the same draft class, that Justin Fields would be going first. So, again, fairly simple pick for me. I'm taking Justin Fields for the Washington team of football. With the third pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. When, when people like me talk about the benefits of tanking, this would be it. Because if they don't get third and they miss out on Sewell, that sucks real hard. Because, <laughs> I mean, you just got your franchise quarterback. It's an, maybe they are going to pick third. Because I, every time I see a team, I'm like, oh, they're, they're better than, than that. But every team is better than that, which cancels everything out. Um, but they, their offensive line needs help. And I know you got a guy coming back this year, but you still need a bunch of offensive linemen to make a good offensive line and just because you have one that might be good but he might be trash is not a reason to not take Penny Sewell um I know every year it's like this is this is like the next best guy right last year I forget who it was and he didn't even end up being the first tackle taken it's he's, he's the best I've seen in 10 years um but he's phenomenal he's an absolutely phenomenal guy and when you've got a talented running back you've got a talented quarterback you, you need a lot of stuff it's just it's just a no-brainer and it's 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 the first three picks is more or less if we fall out of the top five and miss these guys we mess this up I I just you know I understand you don't want to tank or whatever and it's it's bad for something but don't don't mess this up Bengals you need this man don't mess this up with the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. Um, I, I don't like taking linebackers this early generally, and I think this, well, nobody agrees with me, but a lot of the really early linebackers that have been taken recently aren't worth where they've been taken. Maybe we got to give them some time. I won't get specific because people think I'm being biased, but real fun. Um... But it, it just makes a lot of sense. First of all, I want to fill that Luke Keekley hole. He, nobody's ever going to be Luke Keekley again. That's an overstatement, but I mean, you can't expect that. But Micah Parsons is an absolute freak. And, and the biggest thing I want to try to fix, first of all, we have to go defense. We really do. I'm excited about Teddy. I've uh, been listening to the Big Cat. He's been talking a lot about Teddy. Check out the Fan to Fan Network, by the way. Big Cat is our representative for uh, the Panthers. If you haven't checked him out, he's a lot of fun to watch. But he's real excited about Teddy, and I, I, I tend to agree. I think he's going to do a good job for the offense, and you got McCaffrey and all that. we got to look at defense um, and the run defense in particular. Now, we did just pick up Brown, and we got Matos, but even if, even if that does help us a bit, let's put a fine point on this. So now we've got Micah Parsons, we've got Brown, we've got uh, uh, Matos, we got Burns. Hopefully, with all this together, it's, I'm not going to say it's going to be an elite group. I'm real excited about Brown. We'll see what the edge guys do. They're more the smaller, faster, speed rushy guys. But um, collectively, we should be much better as a defense and especially against the run. So with the fourth pick, the Carolina Panthers select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. With the fifth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select... Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. So this is this is where the draft kind of started for me. This is well, I, I guess the Panthers were a little bit tricky, but it, it seemed obvious outside of I don't like taking linebackers that early, but I think he's worth it. Anyways, this one was tough because Leatherwood, according to the board I'm using, which I forgot, um, check out fan2fannetwork.com. I'm going to be getting this new board up today or tomorrow, Saturday. Well, whenever this video gets up, I, <laughs> this is taking a long time. Um, but I'm using my own board. It's an aggregate board. In other words, I'm taking all the big boards from around the web that I can find, combining them into one big board. That's where I'm getting it from. So it's a little bit of a reach. On top of that, I know we just took Mackay Becton, 
it's Mackie Becton. It's better. It's better that way. Um, but I, I still feel like it's incredibly important. I think Darnold is a talented quarterback. We got to get him a little bit more time, though. Um, extremely accurate passer and extremely cerebral. But without a, an offensive line, it's useless. But on top of that, depending on what happens with Le'Veon Bell, I know it's kind of a mess over there, the leadership issues, and you got guys leaving, and I think Le- Le'Veon Bell wants out. But let's set that all aside and assume that everything stays. Le'Veon Bell is under contract for a decent period of time. He's still going to be under contract this year pending any crazy trades or anything else. Um, we got to get him going. And I know you've added a bunch of pieces outside of Mekhi Becton. You've got uh, Fant, for example. The problem is, and I hate to burst your bubble, Fant has been one of the worst tackles in football for a very long time. He's been kicked. I don't know why he keeps getting jobs when he keeps getting fired from his jobs, but he does. He must be just either incredibly athletically gifted or great personality. I I don't know what it is, but he keeps getting work, and he's he's just not good. So we're going to reach a little bit. We're going to go out and get a guy that's going to come in and – be able to, to, to do the most to get us the furthest, if that makes sense. It's the biggest upgrade we could possibly make, and that's to upgrade the offensive line, specifically the right tackle spot. And again, protect Sam Darnold, give him a little bit of extra time with the weapons that he has, and get Le'Veon Bell going, and really that's going to kickstart this offense. With the sixth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher out of Miami. Um, Another, in in my opinion, another dream come true. I think Rousseau is the best edge rusher by a lot. And again, I don't know how much that's going to change given this situation with COVID and whatnot. Um, I think you could possibly make a case for guys like Parsons, Wade, or even possibly Jamar Chase if you really wanted to just load up at the wide receiver position and maybe go that route. But I'm looking at a group of edge rushers that I, I just think you've got if I'm being honest, I think you got some some backups playing um, off the edge, and it's a premium position. And when you're drafting at six and you've got an opportunity to take an elite edge rusher prospect, you can't say no. And so it's it's just the, the need and the, the board and all that, it just matches up perfectly for me. So Gregory Russo, edge rusher out of Miami for the New York Giants. With the seventh pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select... Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. When I was kind of doing my my homeworks, I saw that Pro Football Focus graded the Miami Dolphins as having the worst offense and defense in the NFL in 2019. What that means to me is that it's kind of wide open in terms of what I want to do. And generally what I'll choose to do is pick the best available player and in this case is Jamar Chase. I don't think there's a ton of objections other than we have bigger needs than wide receiver, which I understand. But one of the bigger issues with these mock drafts is I think a lot of times fans want a certain position. And unless I mock you that position, it doesn't matter if I pick a fourth round guy and just say he's elite and say you're going to be much better because I, they just want that position picked. Try to, to ride this out with me and understand that I'm trying to do the responsible thing, which is stick to a board. All this is ridiculous. This this whole thing, the the, the mock drafts in general are ridiculous because it's, it's, it's fake and we don't know what's going on and we don't know what teams have as far as boards and free agency and all that stuff. But if we're gonna pretend, let's pretend rightly. And in my opinion, that is let's build a board and pretend that we're actually GMs and pretend that we're going to be responsible and do the right thing and and do what a GM would do. And in my case, I'm looking at this as a top-tier wide receiver, a guy that I I personally believe is like C.D. Lamb but a lot better. He reminds me of a faster C.D. Lamb, probably a slightly better route. I I wasn't a big C.D. Lamb fan, but that's a separate issue. Um, Very, very good wide receiver. So I'm just trying to get out in front of what I think might be objections, although elite wide receiver I think most I mean look at the Dallas Cowboys and their fans they, they, they didn't need it but they got it and they were excited so um, anyways th- just giving you sort of my thought process on that um, best available player for the Miami Dolphins massive upgrade you know you, you've got to uh, we could have gone in some different directions but again the board doesn't quite line up um, 
And so I, I want to get my man some weapons. Um, and again, defense is a big need, and I understand that, but I still think the offense is as well, despite picking up a couple pieces. So I'm comfortable with it, and I'm excited about it. I still think the Miami Dolphins have a ways to go, but that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're just building. We're, we're adding pieces, and this is an important piece. So Jamar Chase, wide receiver at LSU, to the Miami Dolphins. With the eighth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to trade away their pick to the Denver Broncos. They're going to move back three spots and pick up a third-round pick for their troubles. And with the eighth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Um, the way that I do trades, and I'm sorry I don't have any cool graphics for that. I'm working on it piecing this together one at a time. Next time I'll have it. Um, the way that I do trades isn't I'm looking at every team and seeing who wants to trade up because who cares if you want to trade up. The question is, does the team that have the pick want to trade back? In this spot for the Raiders, I'm, I'm not exactly super excited about who's at the top of the board, so I just kind of threw it out there who wants to maybe move up, and that's when it dawned on me. The Denver Broncos are picking at, what is it, uh, 9, 10, 11-ish? Um, and so... If you're picking that early, and I'm looking at your team, I'm not trying to slight your team and your quarterback. This is a compliment. When I'm looking at Sutton, Hamler, Judy, Lindsey, Fant going into his second year, didn't have a great year, but whatever. Um, the defense, which is probably even more stacked somehow than the offense, and you're picking this high? Drew Locke is either going to get you to the playoffs or he's out. That's it. I'm, I'm not a big believer in Drew Locke. If he can turn a corner and, and really just – I shouldn't even say turn a corner. I think a lot of Broncos fans really like him. But if, if he can just be a, a decent quarterback, I don't know. Obviously, you're not in the easiest uh, division. But I don't know how you don't make the playoffs. We're in a situation now where you're, it's kind of just do well and you're in. Um, because now with the playoff structure, you can have four teams from one division. So just win your games. And again, with, with just the massive amount of talent that you have everywhere, the only question mark for me is quarterback. And if you're picking this high and your guy didn't just get injured all year, and even if he did, I'm looking for a replacement. And I don't think Trey Lance is a, a terrible pick here at number eight. I've got him, I don't have my board up, but I want to say like maybe 15th-ish. And, you know, the way quarterbacks work, I think trading up to eight to get a number 15-ish overall quarterback is probably pretty reasonable. So, um, again, with, with with the team that we've built and with the defense that's just getting better and better with Fangio, who is just a defensive freak, um, I'm not playing around, man. We're getting to the playoffs, and we're going to make a push, and we're going to do it quick because eventually this thing's going to start to dry up. That's what happens. Things you got to be quick. You know, Von Miller's going to be on the way out pretty soon. A lot of these guys who are really talented – they're getting older, they're getting more expensive, and we can't pay for them. We've got to make a push right now. So if we don't make the playoffs, I'm looking to uh, to move on from Mr. Drew Locke. So with the eighth pick, we're trading up, giving up a third-round pick, and taking Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. The ninth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions are also going to be trading away their pick. The Arizona Cardinals are going to come up from 12 to 9. They're giving the Detroit Lions their third-round pick, but they are getting a fifth-round pick back. And with that pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Sean Wade, cornerback out of Ohio State. So the Cardinals actually graded out in 2019 as the second-worst coverage group in the NFL. I didn't see that they did a lot to remedy that. I also see that Patrick Peterson may not even be with the team in 2021, given his contract status and his age and everything else. So this is this is becoming dire. Now, you might ask the question, why is it you need to trade up from 12 to 9 when you've got Wade and Sertan sitting on the board? It's because I've got the Dolphins and the Raiders who ranked last and fourth in coverage. And so I don't know that my guys are necessarily safe. And I'm just not going to mess around. I'm giving up a third, getting back a fifth. I'm going to move up. I'm going to get my guy, who is Sean Wade, cornerback out of Ohio State. With the 10th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins, back on the clock via the Houston Texans, select Dylan Moses, linebacker, Alabama. So despite the concern from the Cardinals that we had bad coverage in 2019, uh, we did pick up Byron Jones. We got Igbenogany there now. So hopefully that'll remedy our coverage issues. I'm looking at something. Um, I do want to go defense and I want to go for a bigger need. And for me, that's linebacker. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like Dylan Moses here, but according to the board I have, it's not 
that much of a reach. I don't know if it's a reach at all, to be completely honest. But not only are we struggling to field talent, but five of our eight linebackers are upcoming free agents in 2021. Baker is a free agent in 2022. We need linebacker really, really badly. And although we could probably wait, uh, second round is a good time to, to pick up linebackers. There's really no guarantee, even though we have two picks in the second round, that there's going to be one. I mean, you, you can't just say, well, we can get one in the second round. You don't know. You don't know who's going to be there. There might be one guy that you like in the second round, and he's gone by the end of the first. Now what do you do? You reach on a back of the, half, the second round linebacker? Point is, we really need it. There's a really talented one just sitting right here, a good value at 10. Let's just pull the trigger. That's that's generally how I operate. I don't like the whole we can get one later thing because you don't know that. With a 10th pick, the Miami Dolphins select Dylan Moses, linebacker, Alabama. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders back on the clock select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. So the Cardinals got one right. The Raiders did want a cornerback. And I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I think the Raiders are pretty close. First of all, I'm stunned at how well they did at the beginning of the season, um, despite the fact that I thought they had one of the worst rosters in all of football. Um, they wildly outperformed. And I'm putting that on Gruden. I really am. I know people see him as kind of a clown, but I'm, I'm sort of impressed and I'm paying attention. Since then, they've added two linebackers. They're getting Abram back at safety. Uh, Farrell, hopefully, Farrell, hopefully takes a step. The defensive line... It's not bad. It could be worse. You got Carr, who I think is extremely underrated. Uh, you got one of the best running backs in the game. You've got a top tier tight end. You've got a really solid offensive line that you've been slowly building. Gruden has been slowly building over time. You've added Henry Ruggs. I really think a legitimate lockdown corner. And and listen, you got to have a couple things fall right. Right. Furl has to. Farrell, Furl. I knew it, and then now I've just completely dumped memory. Dumped. It's Cleveland Furl is what it is. He needs to take a step. Somebody along that defensive line is going to have to step up. But you look at all the other pieces there, the one thing that I think is legitimately missing that could really take this over the top is a is a solid cornerback. And, of course, that also means you're going to have to have Sertan step up and be an actually good corner and not be terrible. But if those couple things fall right, I don't see why the, the Raiders couldn't be one of the teams to keep an eye on as, um, as a very serious contender could also be a terrible team this year depending on if things fall the other direction but um I'm, I'm keeping an eye on them i really am i think some people might be sleeping a little bit with the 12th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the detroit lions are back on the clock after trading back from nine ish and with the 12th pick the detroit lions select marvin wilson defensive tackle out of florida I, I, before i traded back i was this close to picking marvin wilson and I just, I just didn't feel like it made sense. I kind of feel like Marvin Wilson is more of just a run defense guy. Maybe it's just because of his size, and I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping on the guy. But I just, I didn't really want to do it. So I thought, you know what? Let's just trade back, and we'll reevaluate our options after we pick up some extra picks. And here he is, Marvin Wilson. I have number six on my board overall. And, and you look at the needs of the Detroit Lions. It's probably irresponsible for me to have traded back and not just taken him because we need help along the defensive front. The offense, I think, is is fine. It's more than fine. We've got a decent offensive line. We've got an underrated quarterback. We've got good wide receivers, especially Galladay, who keeps getting better every year. We added another running back to our backfield, which, you know, I don't know that we had a terrible back to begin with, but now there's just no doubt. We're, we're fixing that. So then you, you got TJ Hawkins. It, it's just, it's fine. The defense is what needs help and especially along the defensive line, and especially the interior. The interior used to be the strength of the defense. Now we started adding to the guys on the outside and the guys on the inside all left, and so we need to replenish that. So it's it's just it just makes a lot of sense. I just couldn't pull the trigger that early. But again, sitting here at 12, number six guy is still on the board. It's a perfect fit. I, Lions fans, tell me if I'm wrong about this, but that feels like the right thing to do. If you saw Marvin Wilson, number six, on your board, and we're at pick 12, what are you doing? I'm okay with it. With the 13th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. I don't know how you say the guy's name. I don't really care. I mean, I don't have a lot to add to this. It's fairly straightforward. This is an abysmal offensive line. The only real hesitation I had is the fact that 
uh, Creed Humphrey, who was an interior offensive lineman, was actually higher up on my board. I just couldn't really convince myself to take a guard slash center um, with a tackle available. So I'm going to go with the tackle, and I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it, we also got a, a quarterback that we have to start building around, and I don't know of a better way to do that. There's just – I'm just disappointed with the Chargers. <laughs> I feel like they had something. But you know what? It's a new era, and um, we're, we're starting over fresh. We're going to start doing things right. We're going to build properly, and, and we're going to win lots and lots of Super Bowls. It's going to be great. It starts with a tackle, though. Actually, started with a quarterback. Now we're getting a tackle. Sam Cosme out of Texas to the Chargers. With the 14th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Javon Holland, safety, out of Oregon. Um, I'm kind of impressed with the the Browns, and I, I another team that I think we might be sleeping on. It's sort of like the Lions, which is actually the exact same situation where you look at the roster and go, this is a solid roster, but then you go, oh, yeah, wait, it's, it's the Lions or it's the Browns, so that's why they're going to somehow mess this up. But the board isn't exactly the way I'd like it to be. There's maybe a couple other positions that I would like to look at, so keep that in mind. I know you want a different position, but there's nobody. Um, but as I'm looking at this team, I think the offensive line is solid. And not only that, and this is one of the more impressive things about the Browns, these guys are locked up for a while. So it's not like we've got guys that are really solid, but they're 30, they're old, and they're free agents coming up. The whole line, from what I can see, is entirely locked up. So I don't want Humphrey, and I don't want Wyatt Davis. We could get another wide receiver. There's a ton of wide receivers at the top of the board just to stack talent. But... Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry are locked up long term. So that's not really a big deal unless we think they're going to be moving on. But we just added a solid tight end. So I don't need Friar Muth, who is another guy that's an option here. Um, that kind of just has me looking at Holland. And with Carl Joseph's contract coming up and Sendejo likely not even playing in 2021, they're probably going to move on from him because he's a free agent in 2021. I don't mind the thought of pairing Holland and Delpit as our, our safety duo. I mean, it just, it really kind of, it's not a perfect team, but as far as rosters go, there's a lot of talent in Cleveland. Um, and if their new coach, whose name is escaping me, the Minnesota guy, can do something with this, I mean, th th again, there's no excuses. There's just no excuses for this team. You should absolutely compete in your division. And it's a very tough division, but you should be up there just battling it out with the Steelers, with the Ravens, with the Steelers. <laughs> They're picking Holland. Good luck to the Browns. With the 15th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So with all the struggling and battling I've been doing, like with the, the Browns and all these trades, and I don't know, the board isn't really great and all that stuff, the Bears are just sitting here begging and pleading to turn in their card about five picks ago. Give me a chance. Give me an opportunity. Let me turn it in. It took me a half a second to figure out who I was picking. We're going with Jalen Waddle with no quarterbacks available. Wide receiver is an obvious choice. It sounds kind of like there's not a lot of faith that Allen Robinson is going to be coming back from Allen Robinson and the things he's saying on social media. It sounds like he doesn't expect to be back. Nobody's really talked to him about coming back. Um, outside of him, assuming he leaves, it's Miller who... You know, Bears fans like him. He's talented, but he's not like a true number one as far as I can tell. He's a really good number two or kind of maybe a low-end number one. I, I, that's just kind of how I view him. Bears fans, let me know what you think. But we really need that true number one. And I, I, can I just take a minute to say I feel sorry for Allen Robinson, a very talented guy who just can't catch a break? As a Packers fan, if I can remove myself from my fandom, there's there's a, a piece of me that says, you just kind of hope, although I hope they don't win any games, that Foles and Allen Robinson can just have a good little, little back and forth, and Allen Robinson just really stands out and can just showcase what he does, and then they, they continue to lose. Sorry, Bears fans. I, I, I can't be too hopeful for you. I mean, you got a good defense. If, if, you, if that connection picks up, what happens if you win the division? Think about that. Then what do I do? We've already got coronavirus, and now you're off winning the Super Bowl? I can't handle that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to help. I got you, Jalen Waddle. Cut me some slack here. I'm doing you favors. Um, but 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 seriously, uh, uh, Miller, um, who's your tight end? 
Jimmy Graham. <sighs> uh, running back, you know, a lot of people are super excited. He's really going to break out. I was a big fan when you guys drafted him, but nothing so far. The offensive line is just deteriorating. Um, again, very easy choice. Jalen Waddle's going to come in from Alabama. He's going to be our number one. We'll move on from Allen Robinson. we got to kind of rebuild this thing, and uh, hopefully we can do it fast enough before the defense starts to deteriorate. So Jalen Waddle to the Chicago Bears. With the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Creed Humphrey, offensive center, Oklahoma. I know this isn't going to excite a lot of people, and I know Falcons fans, I just lost you. Hear me out for one second, and then you can rip me in the comments section. The board is absolute garbage right now. We've got no corners. We've got no edge rushers. We've got no safeties. We've got nothing working in our favor. So I, I thought about we should probably just trade back. But then it appeared to me like a dream. Alex Mack is 35 years old. There's very little chance he's coming back in 2021. Meaning in 2021, which is when this draft is taking place, no Alex Mack. Things are already bad. We've got a lot of stuff to work on, um, but I, I just feel like the responsible adult thing to do in this situation is to replace Alex Mack with the best guy on the board, who is a very talented guy, Creed Humphrey. It is what it is. We can neglect it and go out and get some defensive superstar after we trade back, who's not going to be a superstar because we're going to trade back to 16 and get a guy probably going to have to reach for him. He's going to be mediocre, and then we're going to have a terrible offensive line. Matt Ryan's going to regret. Every, everything's going to fall apart. We got to do it. I'm sorry, but we got to do it. Creed Humphrey, Oklahoma to the Atlanta Falcons. With the 17th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to trade away their pick to the Baltimore Ravens, who are coming all the way up from pick 31 to pick 17. They're giving up a second and a fourth round pick to come all the way up. And with the 17th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. This is a massive move from the Baltimore Ravens who are going all in. Now, they're they're picking at 31, which means what? They went to the Super Bowl and lost. I've never done a trade this big, and, and some people might say it's too big for a wide receiver, but I'm, I'm really look. I, I just don't like the wide receivers you guys have. Hollywood Brown is the only guy that was moderate. And I know you got tight ends, but you're also losing some tight ends. You've, you've got a solid tight end, but still, Hollywood was okay. And even if he gets a little bit better, I still don't like anybody else you've got. And so um, I'm, I'm just I'm just ready to load up. We've, we've got a great defense. We've got the quarterback. We've got the tight ends and the running backs and the offensive line. I mean, everything's kind of in place. There's one big thing we're missing, and, and that's the only reason I would move up this far for just a wide receiver. And there's other wide receivers, but the, the fact of the matter is the Jaguars are looking and calling around and are not afraid to move way back because the board for a while – is not looking great. So it's a little bit risky for the Jaguars. It's a little bit much for the, the Baltimore Ravens, but they got the call and they're like, you know what, let's just pull the trigger. Um, now, Rondell Moore is ranked a little bit higher, but Rondell Moore is 5'9", 180. He's expected to run in like the 3'3 three, three range. So although that's not a bad thing, we've already got Hollywood, and I'm really just looking for a compliment to that. I'm looking for a, a bigger possession receiver, and I think that's going to be Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota, somebody that a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some people are huge fans of Bateman, think that he is a clear number two. I even heard somebody the other day say that he should be the number one, which I think is a little silly, but we'll see how it ends up. But the Baltimore Ravens are, are, are doing the ultimate all-in move, and they're going to move up to 17 and get Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota. With the 18th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Jalen Twyman, defensive tackle, out of Pittsburgh. I would really like to get an edge rusher for the Tennessee Titans, but for the sake of the mock, let's just pretend they go out and get Jadavian Clowney, which actually um, another member of the Fan to Fan Network Network um, Titan Upload. He's been talking quite a bit about Jadavian Clowney. I think his most recent video, he had somebody on that was kind of an inside source saying that it's basically a done deal pending the contract as well as obviously medicals. But um, either way, it's too much of a reach right now to get an edge rusher. So 
the next best thing that I can see is to continue to build along that defensive line that I do think needs some help. Um, and right now with Twyman and Simmons on the inside, regardless of whatever we're going to be able to muster on the outside, I really think we're going to be able to wreak a lot of havoc on the interior because I think Simmons is an absolute beast. Um, didn't get to see the best of them last year. Didn't get to see all of them last year, but I, I, I still expect him to be a fantastic player. And again, you add Twyman to the mix, and it's just going to be really hard to contain the interior of the Tennessee Titans defense. With the 19th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, out of Purdue. I've been pretty vocal for a while now that I think the biggest need for the Packers going forward is probably going to be offensive line, especially now with all this situation with the virus impacting the, the salary cap. The ability to re-sign guys like David Bakhtiari and Corey Lindsley are getting even more difficult. However, at this spot at 19 with very slim pickings at offensive line and my number 13 overall guy, the highest guy on the board currently, is Rondale Moore, who again, as I said, runs about a 4-3-3, or at least that's what he's expected to be in that range. Um, it's a no-brainer. Uh, the, the, the Packers have tried, and, and granted, he doesn't necessarily fit that 6-4, 220-pound threshold, but we got plenty of those guys now. I feel like enough is enough. The one thing we've tried to do pretty exclusively with late round guys is to get some speed. We've tried with Trevor Davis and MVS and, and uh, Jeff Janis was pretty fast. Um, but this is next level speed at 4-3-3 and it's, it's a relatively early first round pick. So we're going to actually take it seriously. We're going to get that guy. We're going to get that burner. So we, we've got a well-rounded, we've got Devontae, we've got Rondale, we've got Funchess if we hang on to him or Alan Lazard, the, the big body type of receiver. Um, and we're finally giving Aaron Rodgers the, the weapons that he deserves. So, Rondale Moore to the Green Bay Packers. With the 20th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Caleb Fairley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. Another kind of difficult decision for me to make. I, I feel like anytime you go defense for the Buffalo Bills, people are going to get mad because we don't need defense, we need offense. Look, I, I just look position by position, and I look for the best player available that's going to help me out. And I'm, I'm sorry if your defense is already better than your offense and you would like the offense to be better. Caleb Fairley is a fantastic cornerback, and you need corner help. I know Tredavious is, is a good corner. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even want to get into it. I don't know exactly how good we want to say he is, but he's good. But we still need more help. There's nothing wrong with having two corners. I don't think it's impossible for a corner that we pick up to come in and be better than Tredavious. And on top of that, look, we tried to get a guy like Josh Norman. That clearly didn't work. We've tried other things. We, we, we got a seventh round pick. I would like to be able to take the best player that I can to come in and fill what I view to be a need, and that is additional cornerback depth. Um, had the board fallen a little bit differently, maybe I'd go in a different direction. If you've got a better solution for who you think is a good value at 20, feel free to throw that in the comments. Um, but I'm okay with it. I'm good with Caleb Fairley, cornerback, Virginia Tech, to the Buffalo Bills. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Pat Fryermuth, tight end, Penn State. I considered looking at wide receiver, but I just have too many questions, and Steelers fans, help me out in the comments section if you have some thoughts on this. But number one, is Deontay Johnson going to take a step? Number two, is Juju staying in Pittsburgh? Because I have heard rumors that he's not. I think that'd be ridiculous. I'm sure he is, but I don't know where we're at with that. Um, if you answer yes to both of those, obviously wide receiver would be ridiculous. If you answer no to both of those, wide receiver is a very serious consideration. But I still would like to add some weapons to the offense. The defense is stacked. The offense is talented with Ben back, and if Juju kind of gets back in his groove and all that stuff. Um, but I'd still like to help out a little bit more. And I think Pat makes a lot of sense. He's getting to be a really good value here at 21 we don't really have a really good tight end option. And if you add that in with the run game, which is still pretty stout, with the wide receivers, with the quarterback and the defense, it's really a nice, well-rounded team at this point. So maybe we should start looking at the future and building behind some of these older players. But I feel like we have a little bit of a window here, kind of like the Saints, where they just keep pushing out, 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 rather than looking for replacements. 
um, in hopes that they're finally going to get there. And I think we're going to follow suit. We, we've got a window and we're going to push for it. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. It's pretty straightforward in my opinion. Uh, the Vikings have made strides along the offensive line. I do think it's an improved offensive line from you know, a couple years ago or whatever. Um, I think the tackles are serviceable. I think although Bradbury still is not what you'd like him to be for where he was drafted, I do think you saw progress throughout the season. Obviously, the intangibles and the tangibles are all there for that guy to be a fantastic interior player. But still, I think we still need some help along the interior at both guard spots. Um, last time I had an offensive lineman, somebody scolded me because you drafted Ezra Cleveland. Are you expecting to play six foot six Ezra Cleveland at guard, or kicking in six foot six Riley Reef or six foot seven O'Neal into guard? I just, I don't know why I got scolded for that, but. Um, props to the Vikings for looking to the future with Ezra Cleveland, but um, we need a guard that's going to come in and play guard. So we're going to go out and get Wyatt Davis, offensive guard out of Ohio State. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. I changed this pick three different times, but I finally settled on this, and I'm actually really excited about it. I know we have Doyle. But I think that's sort of just a short-term proposition. We need to do better, and I don't know how much longer he's going to be sticking around. Um, but really, the thought of our power run game behind this incredible offensive line, and now Jonathan Taylor, who's going to be a great complement to this power game. You've added in Rivers, who I think is going to be a really solid quarterback. Um, I don't know exactly what the wide receiver situation is. We, we've got T.Y. if we keep him. He is up for a contract, I believe, in 2021. And he's kind of in that 30-ish range. So you would think you're going to hang on to him, but I don't really know. But um, you've also added in Pittman. And you've got the rest of the guys that are there. Um, blanking on his name. Uh, Pascal, who uh, filled in for everybody when everybody was hurt. Did a decent enough job. But then you add in a tight end like Kyle Pitts to that mix. And just the... I, I really think if this is a run-first offense, which which I think is going to help Rivers. Same thing with Rodgers and, and even Breeze now with the getting the ball out of the hand quicker thing. I think as, as guys get older and you start relying more on things like that, um, Kirk Cousins in Minnesota, where we're really going to focus on smashing the ball down your throat and making you panic about that, and then we're going to be able to hit you over the top because he's still a talented quarterback, and we've got our relief valve, a tight end that you have to account for. Your linebackers are, are doomed. How do you account – for Kyle Pitts when you're trying to stop Jonathan Taylor getting devoured by this offensive line. So Colts are, Colts are on my watch list as well, but I, I think to a much higher degree, you can see they're picking here at 23, whereas the Browns, there's reason to be concerned. Um, I think the Colts are, some, are a team that are ready to just absolutely start dominating. I really think they're in, and they're not in a very imposing division. Um, I think they've got a chance to win that division, and I'm excited to watch them play. I'm worried about playing them. I'm worried about seeing them and what they can do. But um, just as a football fan, I'm excited about it. And as a draft fan, I'm excited about this pick. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. Again, straightforward, right? Offensive line since I've been doing this has been terrible. They need a lot of help there. There are some offensive tackles that I'm looking at that could be somewhat appealing, but I really, I just want to go top of the board because I want to get this right for once. I want to draft somebody and for them to be good. So whoever it is we have graded the highest, that's who we're taking. It's the end of the story. You get another offensive lineman. Sorry, Seahawks fans. That's, that's all you will get for all of eternity. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Travis Etienne, running back out of Clemson. I really had a lot of fun with this pick. I don't know if Eagles fans are going to like it, but I, I, I do. I really like the pick. Um, look, you, you got two options. We can find weaknesses and try to fix them, or we can find strengths and, and improve upon them. I watched the Packers versus the Eagles game. I watched what happens when that offensive line gets in a rhythm and it's just a beautifully orchestrated it's 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 great to watch 
And as much as you can probably plug just about anybody back there, think about the potential of if you get a really extremely talented running back behind that offensive line. Pairing that with your now relatively loaded wide receiver class, or not class, uh, group, your talented quarterback, we'll say, two really talented um, tight ends, and as I said, a ridiculous offensive line. And the defense, I can go and do a couple different things. I've been talking about corner and how I think that's a really important thing, and it probably is the most important thing. Again, the board didn't exactly line up, but ETN is falling. ETN should have been gone a while ago based on his talent level. This is the best, most talented guy. He's more talented than any cornerback or linebacker or safety on the board and by a good margin. So we can trade back. We can uh, reach for need. Or we can just say, you know what? I'm taking the best guy here. We're coming next year. And I'm just going to smash you in the mouth over and over and over again. And you can go ahead and try to pick on my defense all you want. It's not going to make any difference. I'm, I'm going to go with the latter route. And I'm um, just going to have a lot of fun hurting people really badly. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. So the long-standing tradition of really talented players falling way too far right into the Patriots' lap continues in 2021 as Devontae Smith, wide receiver out of Alabama, who was the 17th overall player on my board, falls all the way to 26 to the New England Patriots. As far as explanation, I don't feel like I need to really explain. I mean, they need a lot of stuff, and if there was a quarterback here, we could look in that direction. There just isn't one. And also, we got this far somehow, so I guess we're doing okay. But we definitely need some wide receiver help. And, and again, clearly the best player on the board. And um, it's just it's just a no-brainer. So congratulations to the Patriots, who still somehow are fielding a decent team. I think this getting this far is probably not going to happen. But congratulations on that, at least in this fake scenario. And uh, congratulations on getting your fake wide receiver. I'm still a little bit bitter, but uh, best of luck to you, in all seriousness. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. Um, I, I, you know, they, the, the Cowboys clearly did a very good job last year loading up on offense. This year, we're going to focus a little bit more on defense. I think the pairing of Basham as well as Lawrence is going to be an absolutely dominant pass rush duo. Um, and, I, you know, clearly you add that to what you have on defense. You're picking 27, so we're assuming you did pretty well. Um, the wide receivers, the running back. The big question is going to be quarterback. That's what that – Cowboys fans have been ripping me in the comments for – I don't know what the deal is, but that's what I want to know. What's going to happen? What, what, what honestly do you think is going to happen? Is he going to get his contract extension, or are you going to have to look elsewhere? Because if you're picking 27th and you don't have your quarterback, I don't know what you're going to do. So I'm just curious. What have you heard? What are you thinking? Throw it in the comments section. Otherwise, what did you think of Basham? Other thoughts? Blah, blah, blah. Moving on. With the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Najee Harris, running back, Alabama again it's just it's just a fun pick to make it's just a dominant dominant freakish running back that we're adding to this group and 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 I thought about could we get a quarterback um but you know again we're looking at picking 28th so playing along with this scenario we're pretty close and we still have Tom Brady for another year under contract we might as well push in because if we move on from Tom Brady or, or don't try to push now and just plan on the future we're, we're probably not going to win the Super Bowl and, and we're not taking advantage of the window so it's a, it's a delicate balance but I'm ready to, to push in on this and obviously we've got the wide receiver group we do have Ronald Jones but this is a different animal here this this Najee Harris is and, and it's not to say we can't keep Ronald Jones and use him maybe more as a scat back type of, of a guy in certain situations but I'm looking for more, and I, and I really think that's going to take a lot of pressure off of Tom, who doesn't need a lot of help with the situation that he's in as it is. But like everything else, you try to account for the tight ends and the wide receivers and the quarterback and everything else, and then you add Najee Harris into the mix. And that's just one of those things where everybody kind of looks at it and goes, oh, 
that's gonna hurt. That's not fun, especially people in the division. Like, I'm not happy with that pick. So, Najee Harris from Alabama to the Buccaneers. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Brock Purdy, quarterback, Iowa State. Now, I, I love the fact that the Saints continually keep going all in, and they keep going all in, but they've done that now how many times, and again, you get to the playoffs and you lose. At some point, you're going to damage your future because you've neglected the future so much, and when this thing falls apart, i.e. you lose your quarterback and probably some other people, and there's nobody left sitting there because rather than looking to the future, you keep going out and getting free agents and guys that are about now, 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 you, you just completely fall off. And so we're going to try to stem the tide. We still got Drew for one more year, but we're not going to go out and get more people. We, we are the most stacked team in football, arguably. It's not about holes. It's about execution. We're going to start building up uh, you know, for the future behind the guys we have. That's going to be our main focus right now, um, while still expecting that in this last push, uh, Drew Brees is going to get it done. The rest of these guys, they're, they're going to get it done. And if not... We gave it our best, and we're going to have to rally behind somebody else. And for now, that's going to be Brock Purdy, quarterback out of Iowa State. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Hamza Nasruddin, safety, Florida State. I don't know why I got hung up there for a second. It's just, let's see, uh, three, six, six hours now I've been working on this. Um, so... The, the 49ers are kind of tough to pick for because they don't have that many needs. So you look at the board and you look at your needs and it's, you know, it's not always great. But I feel like safety is relatively safe. Ward and Tart are just kind of, you know, depending on when you look at it, sometimes they're, they're better than others. Some years they're better than others. But both of these guys are getting close to 30, 29 and 28, I think. So next year, 30 and 29, I think is where they're at. And Tart is actually looking for a contract in 2021, so he may not even be playing anymore. So I feel like this is a relatively safe bet, um, looking to not only upgrade the position, but I think in terms of, of need based on uh, depth, based on just not having enough guys there, um, and just taking the team to the next level, having a really solid you know, center fielder type safety could really be a benefit. So um, for all those reasons, the 49ers are selecting Hamza Nasruddin, safety out of Florida State. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars are back on the clock after trading from, I don't know, 17-ish? I don't even remember. Long time ago with the Baltimore Ravens. The Jacksonville Jaguars with the 31st pick select. Jackson Carmen, offensive tackle, Clemson. So this is, this is absolutely fantastic. When we traded back... We wanted to go offensive lineman because the offensive line is a problem. We're obviously in a, in, in a rebuild kind of mode. We've got a quarterback we need to protect. So a tackle is a core piece that we need. It is important to protect our quarterback that we need. It's just perfect. But there wasn't really a great option at, we'll call it 17 again. Carmen was the best available tackle. Not one tackle went since we traded back. So this is he went from being a reach and still the best option as a reach to being a great value at pick 31. And we added a second and fourth round pick for our troubles. Fantastic gm -ery by me over here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, who select Jackson Carmen, offensive tackle out of Clemson. Finally, and it feels, it always feels so good to get this last one. So much work goes into this. <laughs> Finally, with the 32nd pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Liam Eichenberg, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. So the, the Chiefs don't have a bad offensive line. What they have is won two Super Bowls in a row and need to find a way to replace the talent that they have so that they don't start declining. Both of their tackles are looking for contracts after this year. This is 2021, so... We're going to have Liam sit for a year behind uh, Fisher and Schwartz. Then in 2021, Fisher and Schwartz are both looking for contracts. We're, there's no way we're paying both of them. There's no way. They're both old. They're both very expensive. Maybe we keep one, but we got to start replacing talent. So I know this isn't as flashy. It would be cool to get another wide receiver. I thought about even trading up at one point, but 
you know, we're not really in that position, in my opinion, to be doing all-in type stuff. We're already in. We're already winning two years in a row. It's about sustaining. So uh, that's my goal. And again, we're looking at offensive tackle Liam Eikenberg out of Notre Dame. That's it, folks. That's all I got. Again, make sure you leave your comments in the uh, comment section. Make sure you write your team name. Let me know some guys that you really like, some thoughts on, on maybe some things that I missed so that next time we can get this honed in. Um, check out fan fan-to-fan-network.com. When this video goes out, I'm going to have an article accompanying it with my new big board rankings. It's got a lot of rankings so you can see kind of where i came to those conclusions i'm also going to have where those sites what what the sites are so all the information is there for you to look at but most importantly please 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 hit the subscribe button hit the little bell notification and if you are a packer fan please check out the packernet podcast five days a week going to seven days a week once the season starts otherwise you take care we'll catch you next time